Hello, my friends. Unfortunately, there hasn't been any new progress by the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk direction yet. Yesterday, in fact, a couple of positions were lost on this front, making the situation here quite difficult as well. In the Kharkiv direction, shelling continues around Kharkiv and in the border villages. The fight in Vovchansk is ongoing too, but despite daily battles, there have been no changes along the front line. Today, we also need to summarize the week as uh, there have been significant changes on the front line. Reports indicate that over the past week, Russian forces captured an additional 73 and a half square kilometers, while the Ukrainian forces managed to secure almost 8 square kilometers. Unfortunately, in terms of territory gained, the Russians are still seeing more success each week. Uh, meanwhile, in the Belgorod region, uh, new strikes have been reported on fuel storage tanks, resulting in a massive fire. This indicates that operations targeting Russian military facilities are still ongoing. In the Kupiansk direction, Russian forces continue to throw resources into attempts to advance closer to Kupiansk. They are carrying out assaults near Sinkivka, Petropavlivka and Hlushkivka, while also maintaining constant shelling. Despite this, the front line hasn't changed in the past day. In the Svatova area, intense fighting continues uh, near Lozova, uh, where the Russians are trying to build on their successes, launching over 10 assaults per day. Uh, battles are also ongoing near Andreevka, and Shalin continues along the entire front line. Further south, fighting for Chernyshina and Makiivka persist, but no new changes have been recorded in the past 24 hours. In the Krimina direction, battles are ongoing for Nevske, Torske and near the Serebrianka forestry. However, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to successfully repel all attacks with no changes to the front line. In the Siversk direction, Russian forces are attempting to build on their progress near Vyimka, uh, where they have made notable advances and are pushing toward the outskirts of Siversk. Ukrainian forces are doing everything they can to hold the defense. Additionally, Russian attacks on Verkhnyokaminske and Spirne continue, but without success. Over the past 24 hours, the front line here also remains unchanged. In the Chesivyar direction, fighting continues on the outskirts of the city. Similarly, battles for Klishivka and Andreevka are ongoing, but the Russians haven't achieved any new successes in the past 24 hours. In the Toretsk direction, Ukrainian forces have erased all of the Russians' gains near New York, and now the Russians are trying to reclaim the lost positions, keeping their fighting intense. Battles are also ongoing for Suhabalka, Nelipivka, and the outskirts of Toretsk. However, Shalin continues at maximum intensity, but the front line remains unchanged for now. In the Pokrovsk direction, the situation remains the most challenging, and yesterday the Russians made new advances. The worst uh, situation is near Zhelanne Persia, where the Russians continue their assaults. Their progress near Krasnohorivka uh, is further squeezing Ukrainian forces. Currently, the distance between the extreme front lines is about 6 kilometers, with only 6 uh, kilometers and um, four kilometers and six hundred meters separating the front line from a water obstacle. The battle here continues fiercely, uh, with Ukrainian forces standing firm, aiming to inflict maximum losses on the advancing Russian troops. Additionally, fighting persists in the areas of Ukrainsk, Selidove, uh, Novogrodivka, Grodivka, Mirolubivka, and Vozdvizhenka. 
Ukrainian forces have reported that Russian troops briefly breached the outskirts of Lysivka, but they were successfully repelled. Meanwhile, the shelling of Mirnograd and Pokrovsk remains relentless. Mirnograd is almost being leveled by Russian forces, while Pokrovsk, though less severely impacted, continues to suffer daily strikes. Both large settlements have become uninhabitable due to the constant bombardment. In the Kurakhova direction, uh, battles rage for Krasnohorivka, and yesterday the Russians effectively captured most of the town and are attempting to advance further. Clashes are also recorded near Georgievka and the village of Kostantinivka, with over 10 assaults reported in the past 24 hours. It seems that Russian forces are experiencing renewed successes in this area as well. In the Vuhledar direction, battles continue for Vodine, with Russian forces attempting to break into Vuhledar itself. Shalon remains intense, but over the past 24 hours, the Russians haven't made any new gains, and the front line remains unchanged. In the Zaporizhia direction, the situation has stabilized, uh, no new assaults have been recorded, and only ongoing Shalon is reported along the front. In the Kherson direction, Shalon continues and Russian forces persist in their attempts to secure the left bank completely. Attacks on Kozachi Lahari haven't stopped, though no changes have been observed so far. Yeah. Meanwhile, Zelensky explained why both sides are now rushing to secure the most advantageous positions ahead of potential negotiations. He mentioned that a peace plan will be presented to U.S. leaders in the fall. We will be able to work with the two parties in the United States of America. On the Polish Forum in Italy, he conducted a meeting with the delegation of the Congress of the U.S. He talked about the plan for the victory for Ukraine, about the details of it. And completely... Ми представимо всі кроки президенту Сполучених Штатів Байдену і обом кандидатам у президенти – Трампу і Гарріс. Головне для нас зараз – на початку осені максимально зміцнити позиції України. There is a faint hope that the situation might change after the elections, though it remains just that – a hope. On the other hand, uh, military expert Glenn Grant has stated that Russia is preparing new reserves for another offensive operation in Kyiv. Russia still has reserves for another assault and they are waiting for the right moment, said Grant. He also mentioned that Russia is preparing for new attacks, particularly on Kyiv, by gathering reserves and armored vehicles. The goal is to advance quickly toward the capital without halting the movement of their forces. Belarus is unlikely to join the fighting, which reduces the risk of attacks from that front. What are your thoughts on this? Be sure to share them in the comments. And that's all from me. So please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.